Good morning. Hello, hello, hello. It's me, Aggie. Hi. <laughs> Happy Friday morning. It's time for us to start our pedestal pumpkins. And yes, I intentionally called it pumpkin instead of pumpkin because that's how you say it, right? <laughs> so, hi, Marsha. Yay, Marsha's here in the house. Yay. <laughs> I'm so glad you're here. Um, good morning, good morning. Do you say pumpkin or pumpkin, Marsha? Because we, we kind of know. <laughs> so this is the pedestal pumpkin class and I am going to probably only be on here for about half an hour right now this morning. This video is gonna talk about the like an overview. Good morning, Mary. Mary's here in the house. <laughs> oh, you do say pumpkin. Okay, well, um, that's good too. <laughs> Whatever works. Um, so I'm just, I'm really today, hey Tanya, we're just gonna go over, like if I'm gonna give an overview of how it's gonna work and what you're gonna need to get started because I know not everybody has this stuff laying around and I figure I'll at least get you all the things that you need so that you can gather them up and then we'll start um, actually creating on Monday, okay? So you'll have the weekend to go grab this stuff if you need to, okay? How does that sound? If you have the stuff already and you're ready to get started, um, I'll give you some things to start on too. So it's gonna all work out for everybody. All right, so um, Mary and Tanya, do you say pumpkin? Or pumpkin I just I have to know <laughs> is it pumpkin or pumpkin so I'm gonna I'm gonna sit down right here um, let me adjust the camera a little bit maybe get you a little closer and um, I'm gonna go over the PDFs first okay so <clears throat> the PDFs actually they're not PDFs they're they're PNG files, which, you know, a PNG file is an image file of a PDF, which you don't even need to know that. It just means you have most everything but the glitter glue. Awesome, Marsha. So all that means is when something is a .png file, that just means you can print it out easy. You can see the preview of it. It's better. It's kind of more user friendly than a PDF. Um, so I created this, these traceables as PDFs, but then I wasn't able to share them with you. So that's why I saved them. I exported them as S, not SVGs. I exported them as PNGs. Anyway, what does that mean to you? It just means um, if you uh, scroll to yesterday, I posted this, um, Let's see, I posted it and um, it's right there. You can see the pictures of this. They're gonna look they're gonna look like this, what you see here. So this is actual printouts of the traceables. Now, I'm gonna explain something here in just a second, but this is what they look like. And then there's one that looks like this. That's the pedestal. There's one that looks like this. This is actual size. Actually, they're all actual size. Um, and then there's one that looks like this. This is These are the vines at the top. These are the vines at the bottom. And to, to get them on the other side, it's a mirror image. So you would just flop it the other way. Or you might want to print it out twice. You could trace these if you want, you know, and use uh, graphite paper. Or there's a couple of other different methods you could use, which I will talk about. Um, but don't worry, you don't even have to draw at all. You can, you can trace everything you need. Okay, so you don't have to have any real skills. <laughs> you know, so if you have crafty friends that you know they don't like to draw, let them know about this. They're gonna wanna do this, I think. Okay, so let me just explain this, what I did here with this one. So this is the top, the upper left, quadrant of the pumpkin. So this pumpkin is 
um, designed so that you can use a 12 by 12 sheet of scrapbook paper. And the height of this pumpkin, it's 11 and a quarter inches high. So you'll have a little bit of leeway with your 12 inch sheet of paper. And on this one, I used five um, correlating sheets of scrapbook paper. If you don't wanna do that, you could just choose three. You could have one design here, second design here, and the third design here, you know what I mean? Three sheets of correlating paper or five sheets of coral, you know, whatever you want to do is fine. And um, I've got mine over there on the desk. So as long as it's um, 12 inches tall, you'll be able to use that scrapbook paper. So what you're going to need to do is to create a template of these shapes. And that's what I set up for you with this. That's what this is all about. Problem is I couldn't show you the exact size because this is an eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper. So I figured, okay, I'm just gonna do the upper left portion of it and then they can flip it this way to get the other half and they can flip it this way to get that other side. So that's all this is. And that's why I gave you the, the big plus sign so that you can line it up. So you can basically take that, I'm gonna show you on a light box how to do it in just a second and create this. This one's a little bit short as you can see. Um, so let's do that. Let me show you how to do that really super quick. It's pretty easy, really. But um, I've got myself a light box here. You do not have to have a light box. You could do this right up against your, um, maybe you have a sliding glass door or a, a window or something like that. And you can literally just take, take this and put it against a window and what I recommend, what I used is tracing paper, nine by 12 tracing paper. So you're gonna need that um, or something, some larger sheet of paper. Um, it doesn't have to be tracing paper, any paper that you can see through when you put it on the window. All right, so I'm gonna tape this down. Let me grab my tape. I'm just gonna grab some masking tape and pretend like I'm on a window. <laughs> Pretend like I'm standing up at my sliding glass door. <laughs> so I'm just going to tape this down. Actually, I'm going to turn it this way so that I get more room. Tape that down. And all I did was I took my tracing paper. And you really only need to do half. You could either do the upper half or, or the left half, whichever you prefer. It doesn't matter because we're going to flip it the other way to get the other side. And I used a pencil and I just placed this on there so that it's, you know, centered, so that it's close to the edge, you know. Um, and then I just traced, you know, I traced these lines and I traced the big plus sign. You want to do that too. We make sure that this is showing. Yeah, it is. So you just trace these lines and trace the big plus sign. Okay. Then you take it and what did I do? I flipped, I should do a new one. Let's just do a new one because I'm going to get confused about the lines I drew before. And for this one, I'll show you with a Sharpie marker so you can actually see what I'm doing. If you want, you can tape this in place. I'm not gonna tape it. And you wanna try and be pretty accurate with this because this is gonna be what you use to cut your papers. You don't have to use a Sharpie marker. You could use pencil. Just try and get a nice clean line. And you're gonna find out that my horizontal and my vertical are not 100% accurate, but it still works. I did this in Procreate and I, it was hard to, the only bad thing about Procreate is it doesn't have a ruler yet. Okay. So I did that portion, right? So now I wanna get the bottom half, so I'm just gonna flip it like this, line it up, 
make sure it's lined up accurately and then I can continue tracing the line this way. And, and really that's all I'm gonna need. Oh wait, I'm gonna need one more thing, hold on. I only need three shapes, the center piece and these two ellipse moon looking shapes. So I'll show you in one second. So now I've got this and this, right? All I'm missing is, um, I need this center shape so that I can cut that out, the center piece. So that's what I'm gonna do now. I'm gonna line this up and draw that in. flip it this way and get this one. So you may not have 9 by 12 tracing paper and that's that's what I'm saying. That's why that's what we're doing today. We're going over the materials that you're going to need to do the class. And like I said, it doesn't really have to be tracing paper. But anyway, there it is, that's all you need to draw. Sorry, that's all you need. So let me get this out of the way now. And I explain it right here. Just, you know, trace the pumpkin upper left onto, you know, like a nine by 12 sheet of tracing paper, then use the same image flipped horizontally to trace the bottom and then fold it in half uh, and trace the right side. But you don't even really need to do that, I realized later. So, okay, let me turn this off. By the way, these are at Hobby Lobby. You can buy these. Or you can probably get them on Amazon. Okay, so now we've got this. And the three shapes that I needed is the center ellipse and this piece and this piece. Those are my three pieces. So if you were going to, like, teach a class on this or something... I would cut this out of cardstock so that you could just quickly trace it onto, or if you were gonna do a bunch of these, I would trace this onto cardstock and use that as a template. In fact, I think I might do that. Let me go grab, let me see if I can find a sheet of heavy cardstock. Hold on. going to use this. I have this stuff called tag board. I love this stuff. So um, once again, I could have just traced it right onto here. I guess I could have traced it right onto a heavy cardstock. Um, tape that down. So what I'm going to do this time is I'm going to separate the pieces a little bit. So let me show you what I mean. I'm going to just trace this one moon piece so that I can cut it out. Try not to stray off of that line because you need it to be right on because these two pieces need to butt together. But it's okay. We're going to put a little bit of leeway in there by adding a line later on. 
Okay, so there's my first piece that I'm gonna cut and use as a template. I'm gonna slide this over and draw. So this is, let's call this piece number one, two, and three. All right, piece number two is not the same as piece number one, by the way, it is slightly different. But you can use it on the other side. You can just turn it the other way for the right side of the pumpkin. So that's nice. If you wanted to, you could probably just trace this directly onto your scrapbook paper, depending on your skills. If you're afraid you're going to ruin it, you know, with your pencil lines, then I would do it this way. Okay, there's piece, so this is piece number one. This is piece number two. And this is going to be piece number three. And I guess I'm, I'm just used to thinking this way because I did so many in-person classes. And it'll be nice to have these, you know, cardstock templates in case I want to do this again later. All right, so there they are, one, two, and three. And um, so the next thing I would do would be to cut that out. Just leave this here. Get a pair of scissors, cut this out. And then you're gonna need three to five sheets of scrapbook paper. So I couldn't make up my mind, you guys. <laughs> but I think I think I want to do um, like a yellow pumpkin. I'm thinking I'm going to do these three papers. I think I'm going to do three papers instead of um, instead. Uh, oh, here, let me put it this way. What do you think? Wouldn't that be cute? These three papers on a gray background with a black pedestal and maybe gold uh, glitter. That's what I'm thinking. There, there's that. Um, I also came up with, I thought I was gonna do five sheets at first. So here's, a, oh, I have six. No wonder I couldn't make up my mind. Um, would this be better? to do five sheets or is that too much? <laughs> Here's five sheets I could do. Um, and then I also found gray. I don't know if gray on gray would be boring, but isn't this the cutest paper? I love this paper. Um, this book I think was called American Gray, this, this scrapbooking book. But how cute would this be? So that's what I'm saying. I might do a second one. Look at these cute papers. How cute that would that be, right? So that's what I'm saying. It's not gonna hurt me to have these, you know, cardstock templates. So um, we're just gonna cut this out and you wanna, you know, you wanna take your time and cut this accurate. I'm not gonna do that in front of you right now. That's probably very, very boring, um, but that's what I would recommend that you do. Let me just at least cut this line, hold on. And then I'm gonna go over the rest of the things you're gonna need, <laughs> okay? I'm not gonna make you watch me do that. All right, so 
Next, um, you're going to need a 12, you know, you're gonna need the scrapbook papers, obviously, three or five sheets of coordinating scrapbook papers. You're going to need a 12 by 24 inch canvas. Okay, so I got these at um, Artist Loft is Michael's, right? And I think so. Um, and this comes in a, there's a set of two and I don't remember how much this was, but um, this is what I'm gonna use. This is a really nice, pretty decent quality canvas actually. Sometimes the surface is a little rough, you know, but um, that's okay. We're gonna paint right over this. Um, and then what I recommend, the, what I used on this one, I think it was this color, I'm pretty sure, is um, Deco Art Chalky Finish Chalk Paint. I love this paint, it's chalk acrylic paint. And the color is Artifact. I really love it, and it's only, it's $8.99, you know. So, and remember, if you go into Hobby Lobby for this, remember they're closed on Sunday, so run out there today. <laughs> the other thing I love, so I'm gonna use a large, a large, you know, chip brush or a large brush to paint this on here, and I'm gonna use a, a makeup sponge. This is a good tip. A makeup wedge is the best way to, to paint an edge of a canvas quickly. Did you know that? Um, okay, so I've got that and that. The other thing, what I don't have, I'm gonna run out and get today. Um, and there's a reason why I used chalk paint because um, the whole idea here was, this. we're not going to varnish this or anything. The whole idea here was I really wanted the glitter part to sparkle, so I wanted to, it to contrast the matte surface of the paint. So chalk paint gives you a beautiful matte finish. So that's the reason. Um, and I'm going to get a matte black chalk paint today for painting the vines and the outlines and the pedestal. And of course the little stem. So I need to get the black chalk paint and you're going to want to get yourself a um, glitter glue or, it's, or a fabric glue that will be what you use for these highlights and these outlines. So let me grab the one I think I used on this one. Um, I think it was this, but I'm not 100% certain. Uh, I don't know where I put my gold one. It's so funny, I took it, I took my gold one out to, so that I'd have it ready and now I don't know where I put it. Oh, it's over here. <laughs> um, I'm gonna talk about this in a second. So I think this is the one that I used for this pumpkin. It really looks like that, doesn't it? Yeah, it looks like that. Um, which was very, very pretty. And it has, it has a nice nozzle tip, not too big. So you could get this at, I think this was Michael's. I'm not 100% certain. The other thing you could do is this sort of a thing. Um, it's a fabric glitter glue. And pick whatever colors you think are gonna work with your scrapbook papers. And then the, um, I think the last thing you're gonna need, you're gonna need a paintbrush, obviously, a nice round brush to paint that on. Um, you're going to need something to glue your papers to your canvas. So I I like using Mod Podge and get it in the matte finish for sure. It needs to be matte, not the shiny. Um, I still have my Liquitex. I can't open that jar, so I'm going to wind up using my, my uh, Liquitex matte gel. It's all pretty similar product. This is a professional artist grade, but um, Mod Podge works just as well. And so that's it, that's everything. I think that's pretty much everything you're going to need. Yay! Um, so do you guys have any questions at all? Um, what I'd like to suggest that you do first 
is to go grab the PDF or the PNG files, go copy these, and you can just click on the, the picture of this and save it to your phone and then print it out on your printer. Hopefully you have a black and white printer. You got, I mean, really, you gotta be able to print these out to do this. You could freehand draw it, but it's actually kind of hard to get it symmetrical and you wanna be able to have nice, accurate sections so that they butt up against each other. Uh, you didn't see the templates? Oh, I posted them late last night, Marsha. They look like pictures. Yeah, I posted them, um, I think around eight or nine o'clock last night. So, um, so that's it, you guys. If you do have any questions, just post them here and tag me or mention my name so that I'll see the post and I'll answer any questions that you have. And that's it, you guys. Have a great day. I'll be back on Monday. Probably do the same thing. Well, maybe 10 o'clock and um, we're going to... Now, if you, if you wanna go ahead and get started, you can go ahead and do cut out your papers and you can go ahead and paint your canvas gray, paint the whole thing gray. And um, the measurements, let me just quickly give you the measurements of where to position it. You're basically going to be able to tell like, once you get this printed out, you could, um, you could, you could use this to measure and it's about the pedestal is about um, an inch and a half. How far is it? Oops wrong way. The pedestal is an inch and a half up from the bottom and of course it's centered. So I'd start with the pedestal. I'd start with tracing that on your on your canvas and then put your um, trace out the shape of where your um, pumpkin is going to be. And you can start if you're ready to you could actually cut out your sections and start gluing them on. But I'm gonna show that on Monday. I would say if you wanna get a little bit of a jump start, just paint your canvas and then um, cut your papers out. And then you'll be really ready to rock and roll on Monday with me, with all of us. All right, guys, that's it. Thank you so much for joining me and be sure and sprinkle the page. You know what it means to sprinkle. Let your friends know and have a great weekend. I'll probably hop back on here and see you guys over the weekend, but happy Friday, bye.